So before we get to the main question today, you might have noticed that my phone is wearing glasses. Any guesses on why my phone needs to wear glasses now? Good guess. It was a pretty tragic thing. It lost its contacts. Speaking of sight, how is it that mountains are able to see? How is it that mountains can see? They peak. <laughs> Those are better than usual, huh? <laughs> All right. You might be about as funny, I like that. I like the second one better than the first one. That's the one really? I, I thought the first one was, was awesome. Really? I did. I mean, with the prop and everything? I mean, that's that's high level right there. Okay. So let's take a look at the question here. Uh, this guy, as I mentioned, is pulling this mass down the incline. You can see there's friction here. And he's having a pretty hard time doing it. That's why he's, you know, angled so much. He's using all his strength to pull this mass down. And we have the angle as being equal to theta. So create a force equation in the direction of the block's motion. So that's the main thing we're going to be doing here. Now, you don't have to write all the work down in answer to the question. But I'm going to show you the work so that you can get the answer down. Of course, in order to figure out what that force is, we have to create a force diagram. So let's start with that. So if we're thinking about the block itself, it's sitting on that incline there. It's got a force of gravity down. It's got a certain tension force down. It's going to have a normal force going up. And because there's friction, that friction is going to be headed in this direction. Going up a little bit. So if I wanted to um, complete this, with angles and stuff, I would put my little dotted line in. That angle itself, without twisting or turning the incline, would slide right in on this side. So that would be an angle there, which would match this angle right here. We'll skip the other angles for now, but, um, well, might as well fill this one in. Usually, if, if we set one angle equal to this, if there is another angle, we set it equal to another Greek letter if we don't know what it is, and that's the Greek letter phi. Um, so this, this is as far as we need to go with those angles for now. So in, in terms of the actual force equation here, we've got friction this way, we've got tension this way, but we've also got some part of gravity acting down the incline. Because not only is this guy pulling down with that tension force, but gravity is also helping him a little bit. So in addition to these two forces, I would also have a force of gravity in the x direction heading down that way. So, of course, we could throw numbers in here and get real specific. The main thing I'm looking for in answer to this question is simply this. Your force equation in the direction of the object's motion, which is in line with the incline, is going to be tension force plus force of gravity in the x direction, because they're both headed the same way, minus friction, because that's going the opposite way, and that would be equal to mass times acceleration. So I just kind of want to get you familiar with these forces again and how they line up on a complicated incline like this. Questions on where any of this came from? Okay, what we're doing today is not going to be as complicated as that. So that's good news anyway. We are going to be taking a few notes 
So get something up to write on and something to write with. We haven't dealt too much with friction yet in this chapter, uh, so we're going to be diving into that more today. If you wanted to title your notes for today, I would probably title them Angles and Static Friction in Force. Angles and Static Friction in Force. Angles and static friction in force. So hopefully you remember at least a little bit, uh, you know, force of friction is equal to capital F with that subscript of mu. That's how I write it anyway. And then this mu is equal to your coefficient of friction. So when we're asking for force of friction, we're not asking for the coefficient. We're asking for the actual force. And those are two very different things. Your force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the object's normal force. Now this is for when the object is moving. When the object is actually sliding across an incline or some surface, uh, we set this equal to force of friction and coefficient of friction. If you wanted to be more specific about it, sometimes they call it kinetic friction. That's friction that occurs while you're moving. Uh, since that is mostly the type of friction we deal with, I just leave it as regular friction. Um, but there is a certain kind of friction that we have to deal with if we're not moving, and that is force of static friction. So that's just a little subscript S next to that mu. And again, it's cursive for me so that it doesn't look like a 5 if I make it a regular S. But you can write it however you want. And that's the main thing you need to know about friction and static friction here, is that if we're dealing with something that is in motion, we're using this equation. If it is not moving, if the friction is too strong for it to be going anywhere, then this is what we're going to be looking at. Questions so far? Cool. Let's just do a couple quick examples dealing with friction. <clears throat> 
So this is how I'm going to start one of my examples here. Uh, we've got a mass. It is being pulled by a tension force, and our coefficient of friction in this case would be equal to zero, which means there's no friction. And for the record, this um, coefficient of friction is unitless. You'll never have any units on that number. The higher this number would be, the stronger that friction would become. So if I wanted to deal with this kind of a scenario, maybe I want to create a force equation out of it like we're very used to doing. So in terms of the direction of this object's motion, which would be horizontal, I've got one force and one force alone. I've got tension force. So that would simply be equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. And that's all that there is to this example. So you can probably guess what the next example is going to be. Uh, we're going to make this coefficient of friction not equal to zero. So then we got to see how that would change our force equation. So if friction is not equal to zero, it's going to be acting on this object as it's pulled to the right. So what direction then is friction going, up, down, left, or right? Left, left absolutely, because friction will always oppose the direction of your object's motion. So if that's the case, my equation's going to look a little bit different. I've got tension force going to the right, I've got friction going to the left, and then that will be equal to mass times acceleration. That's example two. For the last example, we'll actually put some numbers in here. So let's say the mass is 3 kilograms. Maybe it's being pulled with a tension force of 9 newtons. And we'll just set the coefficient of friction equal to 0 0.2 for this example. Your coefficient of friction will be between 0 and 1. So if this is my setup, Maybe I want to figure out what the object's acceleration is going to be. In this force chapter, that's typically the first thing that they ask us to solve for, is what's the acceleration of the system. So let's see if we can figure that out. Again, the way that you do that is the same process each and every time. Force diagram, force equation, and then solve. So we've kind of got our force diagram here. We could throw in gravity down and normal force up, but... In terms of acceleration, this object isn't accelerating up and down. So if acceleration is the thing that I want to solve for, all i got to look at are the horizontal forces. So um, on my force equation, it would be tension force minus force of friction equals ma. So if I want to solve for my acceleration, I just isolate the a. Divide both sides by the mass. So now it's a matter of figuring out what all of these three values are. We know what the mass is, that's 3. We know what the tension force is, that's 9. But we're not specifically given the force of friction. Again, this is our coefficient of friction. This is not going to be equal to the force of friction, although we do need this to calculate it. From what you put in your notes just a little while ago, force of friction is equal to coefficient of friction times normal force. So hopefully we can figure out what these values are 
coefficient of friction is given, that's 0 0.2. Normal force in this case is actually going to be equal to our force of gravity because there's <coughs> nothing, bless you, there's nothing pulling up on this object, there's nothing pushing down, we're on a flat surface, and when that's true, force of gravity is equal to the normal force of the table pushing up. So normal force is just going to be equal to mg. So that's 3 times 9.8. We're going to assume that we are on Earth here. And if we run those numbers, I get 5.88. So that would be my force of friction there. And like I mentioned, it's just a matter now of plugging these numbers in to the equation. So tension is 9, friction is 5.88, mass is 3, and then you do a little bit of math and out pops your answer. One point oh four. Thank you. And that would be our acceleration. And it's kind of the same procedure each time. You know, as long as you have your horizontal forces, take the difference, set it equal to MA, and that's all there is to it. The only extra wrinkle is actually calculating our force of friction, which we haven't done extensively up to this point. Questions on that procedure? Okay, there's one more thing that we gotta talk about in terms of friction, though. Yeah, go ahead. Cool. Pretty colors up there, aren't they? Now, I know it's been about 24 hours since you've done a problem like this, so I am positive that you just miss it to death. I just want to go through a problem like this where we have to deal with friction, too. We're not actually going to solve for acceleration and tension force here, but I just want to get you started on the path that you would use to get those things. We're not going to put numbers in. There's just one or two small wrinkles that we have to be aware of when we have to include friction on this kind of a problem. So, in terms of this kind of problem, we follow the exact same procedure that we did for the other problems like this where there was no friction. We start with a force diagram for each object. So in terms of mass number two, we would have gravity down, normal force up, a tension force in that direction, and some friction going the other way. That would be mass 2. Mass 1 is easier. You've just got gravity and you've got tension. 
And it's always a good habit to get into to making sure that you remember which of these force of gravities go with which object. So it might be a good idea to put a subscript in there for each of those. So that's step one. Step number two then is to create a force equation in the direction of each block's motion. So M2 is moving horizontally. So my force equation is just going to use the horizontal forces. So for mass 2, I've got tension force to the right and friction to the left. And that's what my force equation would look like. In terms of mass 1, it's the hanging mass, and it is accelerating down. So because this mass is accelerating down, can somebody help me figure out what that force equation is going to look like for mass number 1? Why? Because it's accelerating downward. Exactly. So the main thing you got to remember with that is if this object, the hanging mass, is going down, you must put the force that's winning that battle first in the force equation. Because gravity is causing it to accelerate down, gravity is winning in its battle against tension force. So gravity must come first, just as Emma said, in the force equation. So that's what our equations would look like there. Step number three is simply to isolate the tension force in both equations. So for this one, I'm just going to plot my force of friction on the other side over there. And that becomes a positive when I do that. Force of friction again is coefficient of friction times normal force. So that would be the force equation I use there. And in terms of this equation over here, I'm going to move tension to the right to make it positive, and I'm going to move this product to the left. Force of gravity is equal to mg. And I think that's what you end up with. And hopefully you remember a little bit about the final step. Step number four, then, is simply to set this equation here equal to that one right there. Because they're both equal to tension force, we're free to do that. You would be given enough of the numbers to have all of these except acceleration. So it's just a matter of plugging all of them in and then solving for A like we did twice yesterday. Another thing to keep in mind is what this normal force would be equal to. Because we're on a flat surface, there's nothing pulling up or pushing down on this mass. This normal force would be equal to mg like it was in the first example we did. Questions on any of this? Okay. Now, figuring out exactly what your force of friction is going to be equal to can be sort of a uh, difficult thing to do sometimes because there's really three different scenarios here. So what I've done is I've written these all down for you, and hopefully this will help you as you go through these problems now dealing with friction. So I'm just going to prop this up here. Go ahead and write these down. And this will pretty much conclude our notes. I'll talk a little bit about each of those three scenarios. And then you'll have some time to work on the homework. <laughs>
the ext here means external. All right, so let's talk about this here. So these are the three scenarios that we're going to be dealing with at some time or another. If you are on a flat surface with nothing pulling up or pushing down, your force of friction will be equal to the coefficient of friction times normal force. And as long as this is true, you're on a flat surface with nothing pulling up or pushing down, normal force is just equal to mg. So that becomes a very simple thing to deal with there, like in the example that we just did on the board. This one here is probably the most complicated. If you're on a flat surface, but you do have something pushing down or pulling up, maybe at an angle, then it gets a little bit more complicated. Force of friction is still coefficient of friction times normal force, but normal force is no longer equal to mg in this scenario. Because if you're pushing down, normal force would be bigger. If you're pulling up, normal force would be smaller. So in order to figure out your force of friction for this example, you'd have to calculate your normal force first, usually through force equations and force diagrams. And once you have that normal force, you could figure out your force of friction. But it's not just mu mg for this scenario. If something's pulling up or pushing down, you have to first find your normal force before you can go anywhere with this. The last example, which is also complicated, but um, I've actually, I've simplified it for you quite a bit. I think I can see this on the recording. Yes, okay. So on an inclined surface, anytime you have an object sitting on a little triangle or something, uh, force of friction again is equal to coefficient of friction times normal force. And if you were every single time to go through your force diagram and your force equation in order to figure out your normal force and all of that stuff, what you would find is that your force of friction will always be equal to coefficient of friction times mass times g times cosine the angle. So what this means is you don't have to do all of that work each and every time. I've given you the equation for force of friction
anytime you're sitting on a horizontal, not horizontal, on a inclined surface. So anytime you're on some sort of incline with an angle, your force of friction will be equal to this product. It's still equal to coefficient of friction times normal force, but it will always be coefficient of friction times mg times the cosine of your angle. That's just how it always shakes out when you do those force diagrams and force equations. So, questions on this? Okay, so in terms of this worksheet, you're going to have the rest of class today to work on it along with tomorrow because I don't think anybody in this class is doing a force bridge, are they? Anybody in here doing a force bridge for tomorrow? No? Okay, so that means you'll have all of class to work on this tomorrow as well. I do want to make a couple comments on this to hopefully make it a bit easier for you. If you could turn to the back side, please. So number five is something where you can use the information that I just presented to you to make your force of friction calculation in number five much easier. You don't have to go through all of that process to figure out your normal force and then use that to figure out your force of friction. The equation for force of friction is already right there. So that should make it a lot less work. Um, and number, look at number three and four. Number three, it says there's a 100 newton force being applied to a 50 kilogram crate resting on a floor. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.15. So you're going to calculate some things in A and B. But for number four, it says in the situation described above, the coefficient of static friction is equal to 0.25. Will the 100 newton force cause the crate to accelerate. So, if that's the question, we would know that the force is an applied force, and that's equal to 100 newtons. The scenario would look something like this. The object is here. It's being pushed with 100 newtons, but there's friction. And number four. So number four says, will the 100 newton force cause the crate to accelerate if we have this particular value for coefficient of static friction? So ultimately, what we got to figure out for number four is what's the force of static friction? So once you figure out that force, it should be pretty straightforward to figure out whether or not this block is accelerating. Uh, but this is the scenario. Again, this is not equal to the coefficient of friction. You've got to figure out the force of static friction with the equations that we laid out at the beginning of class today. So, there you go. Questions on anything? Awesome. Feel free to get to work on that. If you do happen to have a bridge ready for tomorrow, uh, feel free to bring it in, and we'll go downstairs and see how much weight it can hold.